QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Month 1 Overview. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to be on top with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Gig Drink Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left. We're in the favorites, right clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab, right click in the profit and loss, opening the link in the new tab. And with the trial balance, same thing for the trusty TB tab and to the right, closing that hamburger. And we will change the range going from 010124 tab 022924, making it month by month broken out and running the report. Tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger, and the changing of the ranging will happen again in 010124 tab 022924. And then we're going to say that we want this on a month by month breakout. Refresh, and then tab to the right one more time, ham boogie, close. And change that range, 010124 tab, 022924 tab, and then months, run it. Okay, let's go back to the balance sheet. Last time we gave an overview of the importance of the bank reconciliation process, something that every business should do, large, small, whether you have bank feeds or do not have bank feeds, you should be doing part of the bank reconciliation or doing reconciliations, it being the second biggest internal control, allowing us some assurity that the financial statements are reported correctly, second only to the double entry accounting system itself that we're forced to use when using the QuickBooks accounting software. So now we want to think about the, pro the process of doing the bank reconciliations, starting with the first month of reconciliations, oftentimes having more difficulties than following months. That's why we're going to do two months of bank reconciliation. We'll talk about some of the difficulties that often come up with the first month of bank reconciliations. And then in the second month, we'll have a process which will hopefully be a little bit easier representing the normal process than going forward from that time. So uh, we, we note that the reconciliation is basically going to be tying out matching what's on our books. We're looking at the cutoff date now at the end of January, the first month which our books say is 88, 8, 10, 27. And we're comparing that to what's on the bank side of things. And this is our mock bank reconciliation, which typically has the beginning balances, the additions, subtractions, and then the ending balance. The bank says that we have 61, 241, 85 as of that same point in time, the end of January. It's not the same number you may, may have noticed. Now that will often be the case if we have a full service accounting system, in which case we're putting our books in the system on our side, not relying completely on the bank to do so, and then using the bank to double check, possibly with the help and the use of the bank feeds. If we're building our books directly from the bank feeds, then it may well be the case that our balance ties at any given time it's to what is on the bank side of things, but you can only do that in certain cases. So, and even then you'd still want to do the reconciliation. It would just be really easy uh, in that case. So, uh, so we're going to say, well, what is the difference between the two? We saw that they're, they're hopefully going to be outstanding checks and deposits or things that we have to basically record on our side. So in other words, we're going to tick and tie everything from the bank to our side. If something's on the bank statement, but not on our books, then the bank's probably correct, usually is, unless the bank made an error, in which case we'll have to deal with that. But usually the bank is correct. We're going to have to add that to our side. If something is on our side, but not on the books side of things, then it might be fine because it might be the case that those are outstanding checks and uh, outstanding deposits, which are the reconciling things, the difference between the bank balance and the book balance. Where we run into a problem with the first reconciliation is often this beginning balance. So we have to have a cleared beginning balance that is the same so that we can tick everything off as we go. And if I go over to our books over here, you will recall that we started entering our data as of the end of 2023, December 2023. So if I go into this checking account, for example, and I was to go into this as of uh, 12, 
31 2 4 12 31 2 3 I should say and then and then look at this we put the beginning balance on the books at $25,000 we had to do that because when we entered our beginning balances were imagined from the prior accounting system that was on our financial statement as of this point in time. So we had to put it on the books at 25,000 because we had to reconcile uh, uh, our debits equal in our credits when we put the beginning balances in place. But the bank says that the beginning balance is $30,000. So that's gonna cause a problem with our bank reconciliation possibly because we don't have a starting point that is the same. So in other words, if I go back on over here, let's check that out from a bank rec standpoint, go into the first tab and we go into the, uh, we could go into the uh, transactions and then here's our bank transactions. This is where the bank feeds would flow through. Bank feeds, as we'll look at in future uh, course or section, could help us with the, with the reconciliation, but that isn't the actual reconciliation. The reconciliation is over here in this tab and it says match the books to the bank uh, records connect accounts uh, are easier to reconcile so it's obviously advertising the connection to the bank uh, keep yourself on track find holes in your accounting get things tidy for tax time so let's go ahead and get 